Hello everybody, my name is Moises Garza and this is a presentation that I did in Corpus Christi along with Crispin Rendon. Crispin Rendon will be doing the second part of the presentation so far. Or, first of all, I want to apologize since I had to recreate this video. Uh, I was some, we were unfortunate enough to lose half of the video in the presentation of the presentation due to technical failures. In other words, the camera gave out. So, anyways, uh, lucky for me, it was the part that I did, not the one that Crispin did. So, I'm gonna recreate it from scratch, and uh, here we go. The Weird Cousins DNA Project, and this is the presentation that we did in Corpus, and it will serve to give an update of where the project's at, where it's headed, and uh, what we need from participants to get this project uh, going. And as Crispin mentioned, this project is not a one, two year project. This is for years to come. This project is going to take years to complete or it may never be completed, but we may future generations or the next generation could probably take over. But here we go. I'm going to provide you with the main project website address, the purposes of the project, DNA tests needed to join the project, familytreedna.com, project website, project reports, and who can join this project. Those are the topics that I'm going to be talking about. And the purpose of the project is, the Weird Cousins DNA project is for anyone interested in Y-DNA and MT-DNA research. The Y-DNA is, the, of course, the paternal and the MT-DNA is the maternal. Whose paternal and maternal roots are from the states of Nuevo León, Tamaulipas, Coahuila, and South Texas. Our main goal is to identify the DNA for every last name found in South Texas and Northeastern Mexico and identify different DNA li lineages for any given last name. For example, Garza, there's several... Garza that have different DNA. The purpose of the project will be to take those lines as further back as we can to see where they had their origin, those particular DNA Garza lines. And it could be the same for the Trevino, the Lopez, the Gonzalez, every other last name. Now there's three different types of DNA tests. The autosomal DNA, which uh, we're going to call AT DNA. The Y chromosome DNA, which is the Y DNA. Mitochondrial DNA, which is the MT DNA. The autosomal DNA looks at all your chromosomes. As you can see, the chart next to or here on the slide, it has everybody highlighted. It helps you find cousins. It is the test that they call the cousin finder. And the unit of measurement that it uses is a centimorgan, CM. It's a unit of measuring. More means you're more closely related to somebody. Less means that you're more distantly related to somebody. And now we have the Y chromosome DNA test. And this is, of course, the Y DNA. And as you can see in the chart, it only highlights the direct paternal line, just the males. And it looks at your direct paternal line. This test is only for males. But if you're a female, you, you can cheat. You're in luck. You can test your father, your uncle, your cousin, your brother, or anybody that might be related or might be a male descendant of that particular ancestor whose DNA you want to test. It's used, primarily it's used to prove a paternal connection. Mitochondrial DNA, empty DNA, as you can see in the chart, only the females are highlighted, the direct maternal line. But, don't let it um, misguide you because the empty DNA is inherited from the mother to all her children. Uh, she passes it along to females and males. And this test is for both the males and females. It does not come from the chromosomes. It's actually a bacteria that it's in the cell that helps us create uh, energy. It actually burns our sugar into energy. Now the only company of course, there's three major companies, Ancestry DNA, Family Tree DNA, and then we have 23andMe. But for this test, you could only test with Family Tree DNA, DNA. And it tests the Y DNA and the MT DNA, and it provides extra data that others don't, and it provides the tools for us to be able to make a project to try and identify the last names with the different um, DNAs each. 
and the goals of the project to group people who have tested with family tree DNA into a group who have ancestry in Nuevo León, Tamaulipas, Coahuila, and South Texas. And I'm going to correct this. It's not South Texas. It's actually all of Texas uh, where we're going to be looking at. Identify participants who have tested their white DNA. Identify participants who have tested their maternal DNA. Gener and we're going to try and generate reports with DNA findings and supporting documentation provide proving lineage of direct paternal and maternal ancestry. Crispin Rondon has already made some of those reports and it's a great template for us to follow in the future. And at this moment, we're only on what I like to tell people, stage one. We're just trying to identify everybody that has already tested their Y DNA and empty DNA. Then phase two will be get everybody to upload their trees. And as a matter of fact, we need everybody to start doing that right now. Um, start uploading your family tree as a get -com. So we're able to see and work on the lines that are furthest or are more complete. Those are the ones that we're going to focus on. Even if you have three or four generations, go ahead and upload your information, your family tree, because we are going to end up working on your family and trying to extend it as far back as possible. We went ahead and removed the 10 generation limit because I, me and Crispin felt that that was holding people back from joining the project. So we no longer have a requirement of uh, that you need a minimum 10 generations. As long as you have tested family tree DNA, we want you to join the project. Also, if you have a, if you haven't tested your Y DNA or empty DNA and you did your autosomal, go ahead and join the project because it will give you a special discount. I believe it's like ten dollars off, and it will also let us look at your family trees to see what you have already, and we could start working on that um, more. Of course, we're gonna call you and ask you for your permission to see if. Uh, we don't want to spend all that time working on your family tree and then you're not going to let us use your data. And this is the project website. This is the main place where you should be going. It's a wearecousins.info slash DNA. And it gives you access to the project pages, the family tree DNA, access to white DNA reports, and access to empty DNA reports. Um, we figured out the family tree is kind of... Um, tricky to browse and to find everything so this page at a glance you're going to be able to see everything that the project has and it's easier to browse and this is the page of we're cousins that info as you can see we have the the purpose of the project on the top then we have the goals of the project and i need to change those to reflect what i've just spoken here today and for right now, I have a project manager only, have myself. I know Mario Davila will be helping with that also. And I just want to point out something very interesting that Crispin pointed out. Ancestry DNA, as you could see the, as you could see on your screen, there's a big advertisement right there on top. And I was informed by Crispin that this, this is actually confusing people thinking that the project is being done at Ancestry DNA. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that advertisement from the page so nobody gets confused and that's going to be something I'm going to do pretty soon and if you go further down this is where you can see all the pages the project pages are listed here project group page about us surnames activity feed the surnames is not complete that was just a rough template and it's kind of hard now to go back and modify that but any surname, as long as your roots in, are in our area. Photos, a link if you want to donate uh, towards the fund. And right now we have $100. I need to update this. DNA results page. We have the white DNA, the classic chart, colorized chart map, SNPs, and then the maternal DNA. So these are all the links. It throws you to everything that Family Tree DNA has to offer for the project. And as you can see down here, the white DNA. We already have a list of ancestors of interest and volunteers and then reports that Crispin has actually generated. And there's a white descendant report and then white DNA report and male descendants and DNA results. And then 
as you scroll further down the page, you're going to see the empty DNA. We have the ancestors of interest, the volunteers, and then reports that Crispin has generated already for the project. Pretty soon, I'm going to start generating those reports. But let me just warn you, my database is not as big as uh, Crispin's, and mine will probably contain less information. And But that's where we need your help. Uh, submit. You could either send me your family tree so I could work on them and add you to my database. So when I generate these reports, your family is going to be included also. The project reports. As of October the 2nd, we have 279 members. And then I'm going to be talking about the Y-DNA country of origin, the empty DNA country of origin, project joints, reports by Crispin Rendon. <laughs> this is a Y-DNA country of origin, and from conversations that we've been having, it seems to be that it's self-reported information. Uh, it shows that 53 people have actually linked their <coughs> furthest ancestor to Spain. 95, the furthest ancestors to Mexico. But then we have all these other um, countries, Wales, United States, uh, United States, Sweden, Scotland, Portugal. If um, And that is why it's very important to go into family tree DNA, DNA and set or enter the name of your ancestor, the furthest back that you have gone. That's going to give us better data or statistics for our project and then we have the maternal DNA country of origin it's the United States we have Native American United States 8 uh, Spain 19 Mexico 127 as you can see Mexico the maternal may be the uh, Native American DNA but there's more than on the males and then of course we have all these other countries and that's why it's very important to enter the furthest back the person that or the location of the person that you have researched. And <coughs> this is where the the remake of the video finishes. What you're going to start seeing right now, it's what was actually recorded at the conference. Um, luckily, we were able to save that part. And also I want to thank Saga for giving us the opportunity to be able to record this video in present it to everybody so if you're a member of the project and you were not able to make it to the 37 Texas Annual Genealogical Historical Conference in Corpus Christi you're gonna get um, this video and once again thank you Saga and let's continue with the presentation that's a problem with technology yeah. we <laughs> We asked for special permission to be allowed to record this so we could put it on YouTube so everybody that's a member can see it. Unfortunately, it died because I had no way of seeing it, but I just clicked on me right now. Uh, so I guess I'll put online whatever we recorded and uh, take it from there. But the idea was to provide the video for all the members that couldn't make it over here. At least they have an idea of what the project is, the status of the project. But maybe I'll just make a slideshow or repeat the slideshow and just record my screen and I'll put that out there. Plan B, right? <laughs> now these are the project drones. We started in November and then tried to figure it out. Uh, spoke to Crispin several times. Then in December we announced it. We grew to from 34 to 165 people and it has had a steady growth. And then right here where it's flat because of the date. But it's uh, hopefully after this conference, it's going to jump furthermore. And as we promote it, and as we have more conferences, and we pro uh, promote the project, it'll start growing. And this is a project for everybody. It doesn't belong to anybody. It's a public project. And like it's been says, it's a citizen project. Citizen science. And guess what? I don't want to do all the work. We need <laughs> volunteers. I want to be to a level where me or uh, one or two other people were just like project managers managing everybody else, you know? And if there, somebody wants to be a project manager and has the initiative to tell me, we need the help. The more that we get working on this, the faster the project can move along. And 
Crispin told me, are you sure you want to do this? And if you're going to do it, it's not a year. I say, you have to commit for five years, ten years. It's, it's a project that if we continue, it could continue forever. But who knows where the field of DNA is going to take us in the future. And so far, these are the reports that we have online right now. There are five Y-DNA descendant reports by Crispin Rendon, three Y-DNA report reports and descendant reports. These are the ones where there's actually volunteers and uh, it mentions their haplogroup group and their DNA information in the front of the report. And then the, I'm sorry, those are the Y and then the maternal ones, five reports of descendant reports. And these descendant reports, I'm sorry, the descendant reports are to identify uh, females, living descendants for that particular female that actually can be tested. But I'm, uh, I think Crispin might talk more about that. And who are they for? I want to emphasize that. That's for the whole genealogical community. It's for us, for our children, and hopefully their children's children. Um, and we have to find a way how to rip or how to preserve this also for future generations. And technology, thank God, it's offering a, a it's a very good choice. And those PDF reports can be replicated and there's zero cost in replicating digital stuff. So that's where we have an advantage. Who can join the project? Anybody can join the project. The only thing, you have to test through Family Tree DNA. If you already tested with your autosomal, join the project. Some rules of the project didn't make sense. We we're kind of changed them. We removed that 10 generation one uh, because I felt that that was keeping people back from joining. And another thing, if you don't have your sources, I don't care. Upload your family tree because we're gonna help you get the, sor uh, the sources for your direct paternal and your direct maternal lines. If you feel like, no, I'm not ready to share because I have wrong information, it's excellent for, for, for you to get another set of eyes to verify your information. Mm -hmm. So we're going to actually try and help people out. And that's where the volunteers are going to help us. Hopefully, most of you have so much experience. And we get people with experience that can actually know how to get those documents. And then I'm going to have videos how to make those reports. or have other volunteers where they could just put the whole report together. But there's some things that I'm going to make, make videos showing you what to do. So it's for everybody. So when you join the project, now what? It's not like, oh, you're going to see immediate results. No, you're helping contribute. You're, you're just a little a grain in the beach like of what we're trying to accomplish for everybody. And what we need you to do is add your family tree. And Christine corrected me. I, I had the wrong impression that you could just go and enter it manually. But no, it's asking for a GetCam file. A lot of people don't know what that is. But they tell me, oh, I have my family tree on Ancestry. That's perfect. You go to settings, you could download the GetCam file. But guess what? I have to make a video showing people how to do it step by step. Or if you have it in a program, perfect. You just download or tell it to make you a GetCam file. If you tell me which program you have, I have all the, basically, all the major uh, programs that people use, because I've tested them out to recommend or not recommend. I'll use them to make videos how to get the GetCam and how to upload to Family Tree DNA. Because I, I went one by one of those 270 some people, put them into a database, and and saw how many had family trees, who doesn't have one. And pretty soon I'm gonna start emailing people. And then if I, you get an email, hey, can you upload your, your family tree? Respond to me, tell me, Moises, I have no idea how to do it. I'll send you the link to the video how to do it. And that's gonna start pretty soon. So if you remember the group, don't disregard my email, just be looking at them or trashing them if you don't like them. But if it's the project, please respond. Another thing, if you join the project and if we ask you, can we use your DNA, uh, try and make the decision when you join the project if you're going to give us the permission to actually use your uh, 
haplogroup group or your name. Okay, um, that's something that I've seen right now, but it's a work in progress. And next year, hopefully, we can give an update of where we're at, and maybe we may take a, a small, different direction on the project. But it's a community thing. Now the expert. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One well, one thing I want to be sure and, and make clear is that um, uh, I'll figure out what we hit the lead. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so first of all, a show of hands, how many of you have already had your DNA tested? Well, that's all of you, okay. <laughs> it is not, it, it was not mandatory, uh, you know, this information that we're going to gather is a citizen science thing so that anybody of your friends and stuff can learn about the whole community. And it only works this way because, you know, when you do your test and you just keep the results to yourself, it's like you decided it wasn't worth having because it's very much like doing genealogy and not sharing it with anybody. It's like it's not worth anything. It only gains value when you share it. I mean, that's why I do all this stuff for free. What the, what's the point of me doing it and just looking at it myself? I mean, <laughs> it takes a little effort to share it. I mean, I enjoy doing it. And it takes effort to share it, but it makes it more valuable. And, the, and it's really important on the DNA thing because when you do a Y DNA thing, it says almost nothing about you. It's you, my first wife, it's me, my dad, his dad, his dad. You go a few generations back, and you've got all these ancestors, and you only know about one of them. What about the others? Don't they matter? And the only way you can find out about the others is by having somebody else who, whose why goes to the others, right? Or whose mitochondria goes to the other. I mean, I do my mitochondria, that's me, me, my mom, her mom, her mom, and and how about all those other grandmas I have? Aren't they important? I think they are. And the only way I can find out about it is I have to count on you guys. You see, I know. And, and the, the same goes for you. I mean, you might sit there and say, gee, I really want to know about this Alberto Del Canto. Wouldn't it be fascinating to find out he was an Indio or something? <laughs> <laughs> But in reality, um, he does have a bunch of Y descendants. I think most of them are uh, Rodriguez. So when I see Rodriguez in the books, I think, oh my gosh, I hope this goes somewhere. Anytime I create books, the first thing I look at is the mitochondrial thing, because I've been doing that for quite some time, and then the, the Y chromosome thing. And if it's significant, then I contact you and, and ask you if you've already been tested, which is always sweet, because then it's already paid for. And on the mitochondria one, if you have it, then I've got a program. People donate money to me, and I put it aside. Some of it's in a Kiva account, as some of you might know. And I never hardly ever reach for it, because a lot of times people pay themselves. Or for most of us, we just can't go back far. And on the mitochondrial one, I do count on 10, because then more of us care. Uh, because if I share with you that my mitochondria is whatever, and I only go seven generations is what I do, then none of you have that person as your ancestor. And so you sort of go, well, well that's nice. You know, <laughs> I really don't care. I really don't care. Anyway, I get sidetracked. So <clears throat> when I sign on to my account at Family Tree DNA, and some of you have different companies, but if you have Family Tree DNA, it looks like this. You know, you put your kid number in a the upper left, and, woo, and then below your, you have to remember your password. And that's sort of important because you get older and you do this test and you, you were disappointed because you got your test results back and you go, big deal, what does it mean to me? Uh, some numbers and letters and stuff. Um, well, and then next thing you know, you forgot you even took the test and you can't find your kit number. <laughs> so be sure and keep it because these test results are going to be good forever. And as more people test, they become more valuable because all of a sudden you have people who can pair it. And that's another real important point about where you share it. 
when you go on and check your account, it just shows your matches, right? It doesn't say how you match, or it, in a vague way it says, you know, a perfect match, so many markers off, but you don't know which ones. But when you join a, any of the projects, and they're all free, then you go to the project page, you see your kit number, your results, and everybody else's kit numbers and results. You don't get to see their names there. Now, when you do match somebody and you're outside of the project, you can always see uh, uh, everybody else's email addresses. You can always contact them. But in the project, you don't see their email addresses. Okay, you see that? It's just a little something that, and you don't care about that. What, why am I carrying on? Okay, next. Oh, uh, backwards. I'm backwards. And then, once you get in, as many of you know, um, the first thing it shows on, the, on this, uh, what they call the dashboard, is you get to see, in this case, that's my Y-DNA, and over here, we chopped off my, <laughs> my uh, M, uh, mitochondrial DNA up here, K2. I, maybe I cut and pasted it wrong. It's a few more letters. And then, of course, I have my tree there. And now, if, you need, if I already have done an ancestry book for you, obviously, I have your tree. And, and normally, I don't do jet comp for people because the next thing you know, they're pasting them this way and that way. But if you join the project and you ask and you get, hey, I really can't make a jet comp. It's just such a nuisance and stuff. I don't even have software for it. Would you just please send me the, my jet comp so I can upload it? Email me. I'll do that for so many. Not for a zillion generations, right? Because on this project as it is, um, obviously we'll cut it off wherever your wide line cuts off or your MT line. And then, we'd, the because those are the two lines we want, and I'll send it to you and then you follow a video to upload it and stuff, if that's okay with you. So that mean, you're welcome to ask me to do that. Um, I will, I, yeah, just, we want to get this done. And then, uh, of course, uh, you get all these little things where you can compare re results this family finder thing, even though we're not doing it now, and we're not really, it's not one of those things we're dealing with. It's the future, it's the test everybody takes. Um, most of you, when you said you, you did your DNA test, that's probably the one you did. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but we're on this project, we're going to be working on the, the older things. The oldest DNA test is, has been the Y DNA thing. And now, this is where all of a sudden, if we can get a Rodriguez and follow his tree up, and it goes to uh, Alberto Del Canto. And if you don't know the history, well, maybe you'll find out about how important that, you know, his historical person. And there's all sorts of other of your ancestors that are uh, important. I mean, I wish we could follow up all the way to Andrea Tapia, who was a conquistador that was there with Cortez, but I don't think he had any male, I don't think he had any sons, or I forget. I'm sure that line doesn't come down or I would have wet my pants a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Soil them then, okay. <laughs> or fall. Anyway. I should fall I haven't even started drinking. Okay. <laughs> okay, and then of course the mitochondrial thing is at the bottom and I, there I am again pushing them off. But, okay, on the MT thing, I wanted to talk about this a little bit. You know, there's so many different uh, haplogroups. groups and on the sites, in case you don't know, there's always these sort of fun things. You can go in and learn more about your particular one or any of the ones. For instance, I was, I'm a K something over here. And so if I want to know more about all the Ks in the world, I click on K. And in this case, it would be a long line of all the Ks on the planet, right? And because I know that my K is followed by 2, well, first, I have to have these mutations on my test results. So I know they're there because I already have my results. But so those would be there. And because I have a 2 following the K, I go down here to this line. I also need these two mutations. And an A, and who really cares about this? But anyhow, you can really see after you've been doing this for a while, you get suddenly excited about all this little trivia. It's like getting excited about baseball where all of a sudden you want to know somebody's average score or something. <laughs> so right now you might think, oh, who cares? But it ha for some reason you get infected. So this might be a good chance to back out of this, okay? <laughs> In other words, don't blame me later for why you can't think about anything but this. And of course, it's all related to the paperwork because 
doing this, which unfortunately some people, they can't do paperwork, um, all they have is the genetic DNA. But what we're working on, because I have paperwork and so many of us have some, such wonderful paperwork, we're bringing the two together. We're doing the traditional genealogy and enhancing it with the, the genetic genealogy and making it, you know, what's the term for when you bring two things together and the greater Synergy. Synergy, I think. Yeah, some sophisticated term like that, right? Okay, I do that every time. Oh, and then other fun things like here's, is Yolanda here? This Yolanda. Hello. Hey, Yolanda always gets real excited. And, and her roots actually partly are over in Zacatecas, and I'm a sucker for her. I, I, I don't only want to do Zacatecas. She's always sending me a document I have to read because uh, because she, that's who she is, okay. <laughs> but you get your breakdown on your ethnic groups, and in this case, uh, she was European and Jewish and Native American, and on the site you can also have a comparison for all the other people that you match on their most distant relative on their Y chromosome and their most distant relative on their uh, mitochondrial. And that's what these other dots are and the colors. So I forget green might be uh, male and, and Y the other. But this is a good time to mention that when you do fill out your site, it, it, it's really helpful if you, if you follow the sort of rule that when they ask for the most distant ancestor on your, on your maternal or paternal site, they don't just want any ancestor on that side. We want the one that's the end of the line on the Y chromosome or the end of the line on the mitochondrial. You no, know, if it's just your mother, well, it's your mother and she was born in Fredericksburg, Texas or something. Um, and the same, even though going the other way, you ended up in Charlemagne, it's not what we want here. We want just that sort of thing. And which will probably bring a lot more dots off of Spain and back to Mexico. <laughs> but that's realistic stuff, okay? And we can talk about that later, uh, if, or you can always ask more about that. And then, of course, it's always fun to look. Uh, these sites always had something about your uh, Y chromosome and how it, it left. In this case, Adam. Here I am. Adam was my ancestor, and I ended up as a Moor over here and invaded Spain for 400 years. That was my ancestry. Okay, it, my interpretation. My interpretation. <laughs> now all of Europe, in this case, here the big dot out of all these dots over here in the, the old world, you get a sort of feeling for. In other words, you don't want a whole. This DNA isn't going to take customers. You don't actually take customers away because a person can join as many different of them. But a lot of you might have already had your test over there for many years. Um, there's no reason not, and they'll, and they'll stay there, there's no reason not to uh, also join this group so that all those test results that have been done on the Garzas and the VODLs that we know belong to this group too will all of a sudden show up on our page, which they haven't done now. Okay, and let's see. And the end. And so, question time? Okay, who has a question? Good. Okay, let me let me do like the shows. <laughs> so everybody can hear that question. As being mentioned, some of us have lost the numbers of our kids. How can we go about finding those numbers? <laughs> I knew it. I knew it would have happened. It hasn't happened to me, but call the company. That's the best thing. Give them your email. I'm pretty sure there on the website there's a way to reset the password, but if you lost your kid number, the best thing would be to call the company. Well, it says, yes. you send, you s email them. You send them an email, and uh, they'll reply to you with the information. I have done that in the past. Okay. I just send them an email, and they'll reply to you. And you need your password, and say they will do that as well. Okay. I uh, did the DA about three years ago. And I uh, was shocked because it said that was 60% Russian and 38% uh, Maya. And then some other ones. It, it just didn't make sense to me. Makes sense to me. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, so what? I, I think I in the future, at, like at the Austin conference, it would be wonderful if we could get a speaker that would help explain exactly what's going on there. And part of it, of course, is knowing the history of Spain and Europe. Okay? And when I say history, our DNA goes all the way back to the Neanderthals. So we need to explain how your DNA, because what you're talking about with those kind of results, first of all, aren't Y or mitochondria. On that particular one, it's the autosomal one. And notice how that pro our project isn't really doing that. <laughs> but it's still a good question, and there are, it would be great to come to, uh, uh, and those results, by the way, change from time to time. When I first did my results, they, they weren't this my origin map with the nice little images and stuff. They were archaic terms of population and groups that haven't been on the planet for many, many years. So things change and the algorithms used on your actual numbers uh, are reevaluated and redone as more research comes around. And so even though you are Russian now, which I am too, by the way, uh, your Russian may disappear next week, or it might be gone today, for all I know. But it, I think the explanation on that was the Ice Age, the last mini Ice Age, is the last I think. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to interrupt. Let's just move on to the questions. If you go to the Facebook group or ask us afterwards, because I, I don't know if there's going to be another presentation, uh, could somebody tell me? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. How does the Y DNA and the origins? Do I need to do an DNA? Well, on, on family tree. Well, if we can do ten generations, uh, we may do it for you. But we would like to see your your empty uh, your mitochondrial uh, tree. Okay. Good. Okay. But you're welcome to do it regardless. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm, I'm looking at that because I, I, I didn't know once I did the family origins if I still had to do the empty DNA. Yes, the family oh. origins is not the same test. Gotcha. It, okay, and then the other one is uh, the JetCom that's already been uploaded to Family Tree. Is, once it's in there, do I still need to get it into uh, what this we have? Uh, no, it's the same place. Family Tree DNA has nothing to do with JetCom. Family Tree DNA. You don't need to upload your get them to work as even if you try there's no work to upload it. So, so uh, I have already up uh, that I uh, uh I go to the uh, um, uh, what was the uh, ancestry ancestry. So can I participate? Uh, that's a perfect thing, and I think I already explained that. If you test it with Ancestry 23 and Me, you need to download your raw data, update to Family Tree DNA. They're going to give you 20 matches for free, and for $39, they're going to give you all your matches. And you can use that Aurosomo to join the project in order to get get a little discount. But once you get the project, we could see your uh, get come and tell you or ask you, hey. Could you send in your maternal and paternal lines to see how far back you are? Maybe you may be a person of interest. You may have an ancestor that's a person of interest for the project. Oops. Follow, follow away. Uh, let's change this way. Uh, once you get, get the results, you know, it's like Greek to me. You were, you were trying to explain, uh, you were uh, starting to explain the K to and so forth, and you said, well, you don't need to do it. And that's what I need, we need to know, and if that can be a, a part of a conference for next year, where if the results are explained. I think Geneva just heard that. Good guy. Let, let me Geneva answer that. that. That's important. DNA, as I mentioned, it could be simple or it could be super complicated. Now, we need to get an expert on the field. There's some, some uh, American genealogists, that they do genetic genealogy. They've been doing it for 10 years. If we could get one of them to come down, it would be perfect. Because there are years ahead of us. Years. Up to 10, 12 years ahead of us. Like, who are you talking about? CC Moore. CC Moore and then uh, the, uh, Lucio, the one that wrote the book. And I have a queue of 10 books that I have to read to try and get to their list. <laughs> <laughs> I've already started following all their blogs. I'm reading all their articles. And 
because I know that's going to help the community. When somebody asks me, at least I have an idea. Two years ago, I had no idea what DNA was. Christine started making these reports, and he told me, you should test I'm like, okay, you know? <laughs> and look where I'm at right now. But we, we need to bring professionals. Because, you know, why are we... I could do a, an intro to genealogy, which is perfect, introduce people to it, but for the more advanced people that are attending this conference, we should have a professional. To, and each conference, get another professional. So we can move forward and forward. Hopefully, later on, we'll have our, or Hispanics are focusing in our area that are professionals. But that's how, or where we should focus as a community. You know, we, we talk about New Englanders. Many of us have of anglo Latinx, many of us have married, oh, you know, New England ancestry, we're still related to them. Regardless politics, regardless our history, we have to move along, you know? And we can't be living in the past. We have to make a better future for everybody. And and I'm thankful for past generations because sorry, I get emotional but my children are not going to experience what other generations experience. For those, um, I should make a list, and I'm going to make a list of recommended books to read and to buy. That's the best thing to help answer that, because every book you read, you pick up something new. You pick up something that you learn. And in the community, somebody may ask a question, hey, another member already read the book and has that. And that's where we need to come together and network with each other. We, yeah, you can continue being a, what I call a lone wolf, but we become part of the pack. That's the way I see it. And I don't know if we should just cut it here. Can we still get Still doing the project if we've only done autosomal, or do you want just the Y DNA in it? No, if you tested your autosomal joint, because you may have, you may be a direct descendant of somebody that's it's of interest to us, and we're working that line, and we're going to ask, hey, well, could you test, and if they tell us, you know, something, uh, I, I can't afford it, I'm a budget, then we're looking to pay for the test. And that's for the community too, because they could actually, actually contribute money. If they're experienced, you could just go there and donate money if you want to. You know, it's voluntary. <clears throat> but that's another way that you could help the project. So when we identify both uh, male descendants or female descendants, and you're a uh, person of, uh, you're a direct descendant, and that person's interest, we want to be able to have some funds to size care, let's pay for the test. And then we're able to have that information. And that way we feel on top, you know, and it starts moving forward. But it's a community effort and that's a way it has to remain. Because it's too much for one person or two persons. Christine has been doing it alone. Uh, hopefully you'll remain helping us. And I'm pretty sure he will. So. And before I leave, I want to thank Sada because they let us record the presentation. And we're going to put it on Facebook. So all the members that are not here, they're going to be able to see it. And hopefully, if, if you want to review the video, we're going to have a link to it for YouTube where you can go and re-listen to what just happened today. And whatever I didn't record, I'll, I'll just go in there and, and do, I get my voice or something, but I'll fix the video. So once again, thank you all for attending. Good night, Thank you.